Joining us now, the man himself, Hall of Famer, Fred McGriff. Fred, congratulations uh, to you. Thank you. That has a beautiful little ring to it. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you just went back with your family to see your plaque for the first time. What was that like? Uh, it was awesome. It was a great experience. And um, BK, to say, I just, for my son and daughter and wife to be here and let them experience and just to see their faces on, on the joy yeah. of looking at my plaque and everything is it, special. They're still back there now, yeah. right? <laughs> Check it out. Do you see your placement? Or have you gotten to wander around and see the other uh, you know, great players from years gone by? Have been able to do that? Uh, well, we came back. We, came, we were here uh, back in March. Mm -hmm. So that's when I got a serious tour. And I went you know, underground, right. saw Beirut's uh, bat and everything. So, right. Yeah. Could you swing that? It's a big bat. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, would, a, that's a law. Right? No, it's funny. Now, you're, you're, it must feel better today. Right? I mean, no matter what, you know it's coming. You know that speech. You know there's going to be people. There's going to, it's, a, it's a big day. So what is it like now? Oh, now it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Like you say, um, because before, for the last six or seven months, you're tossing and turning, you know, a little stressful, like, yeah. um, <laughs> OK, what am I going to say? Talk about this person, that person, ah, this coach, I'm not sure, a little stuff like that. And, right. and, and you, want to, you want to do well and everything. So it gets a little stressful. But I had a lot of people help me out. Even got Harold. I was like, Fred, I'm telling you, you know, with your speech, use your finger and so you don't forget your, pl your, your place. So when you, look okay. at the crowd, when you look at the crowd, you know, so I'm like, Harold, okay. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, I'm going to use that. Harold Reynolds helping out. Yeah. Uh, you were, I'm sitting right behind you, and as I'm looking at you, I'm going, he's calm. He, cool. Like, how were you able to, to do that? Because I didn't know you were out doing public speaking and that sort of thing. You seemed very calm yesterday. Well, they prepared me very well. Hall of Fame people, uh, they did a great job. Uh, then we had a rehearsal on Friday, so I was able to um, see the stands and, the, mm. and where everybody's going to be at and everything. And so uh, they did a great job. No, but you delivered. You really did. Yeah, um, you. It had to be uh, obviously important to you for your wife, Veronica, to, get, you know, to, to, to make sure she knew that she shared this journey with you, your, your, your wife and your children. Um, what was that like to see them? And your wife was crying right in the front row. What was that like for you then? It was, I, had to, I had to turn, you know, I'm like, okay, <laughs> my wife is crying to cry. <laughs> but, it, but it's just special. Uh, just like we talk, a lot of hard work over the years. Uh, she's been, been with me uh, through the, the good and the bad, you know, because uh, baseball is such a tough sport. And sure, you hit a home run and it's, and it's a lot of fun, but trying to hit 300, it's very tough, and the grind is not life and death pressure, but out there, you, you got to perform. Right, or, yeah. yeah. And right. then once you've had success, now they expect it out of you all the time. <laughs> so mm. once I started hitting 20 and 30 homers, it's like every year, you got to do it or not. And they go, oh, what's wrong with Fred? That's like when guys started hitting 60 homers, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, yeah. And I'm still hitting 30, like, oh, Fred, what's wrong? You know what I mean? I'm like, what's wrong? I'm, I'm the same old, same old, playing my game. Right, you were, and that was a big part of why you had to wait. So you were on that Veterans Committee ballot with guys who had ties to PEDs. What, what were your thoughts, like now that you've been through that, that journey of how 35 home runs would lead the league and you'd lead the league in 35 and then suddenly there's 66 and there's 70 something. What's your view on that, on guys who took another route? Uh, well, for me, it was all about having integrity and going out and playing the game. Like you can't trust in my talent. And that was the whole thing, just trusting myself. Because I tell people, um, I didn't need steroids. Um, I just needed to find a way to make contact. Mm -hmm. if, if I could make contact, I was going to drive the ball. Because it was all about driving the ball in the gaps, hitting the ball the other way. And it was just, Fred, OK, how can you make more contact? Because when I was young, you know, it's like, OK, I'm learning, adjusting to breaking pitches. And like I was saying, um, I tried to guess a lot um, every at bat. And then I ran away because he was from Tampa. And he's like, Fred, just stick with that fastball. Stay on that fastball. And it was awesome advice. And I started doing it, right, in the minors. And it started working. And I, I, look, I tell people, I look for a fastball every single pitch. Uh -huh. And I adjust it to you know, the breaking stuff because I'm not really getting a lot in by hitting. But I was looking for something coming 90 miles an hour every time. So when they threw me something 70 or 80, I still could adjust. Uh -huh. and hit it, you know, so I kept it simple. You know, the game is already hard, and so just keep it simple. So when I looked, so it didn't matter what league I was playing on, playing in, what team I was playing on, I was looking for a fastball. Uh -huh. so, so changing leagues wasn't no big deal to me, because it don't make any, and you will get a fastball to hit. Like when you watch TV every single night, <laughs> you see guys will get a fastball. And it drives me crazy now, because I'm seeing guys 
take cookies right down the middle You're of the like, plate. You're like, that's it. That was it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to ask you, though, was it frustrating to see that many home runs and the explosion? I mean, maybe the ball was a little rocketed up, too, but guys were clearly jacked up. That bother you at all? Uh, well, you just go out and play. And one the thing, baseball, it's a fraternity because um, I, I see the same guys. They have to they come around at first base, and, and they're your buds and everything, and you just – you take care, you control what you can control. Uh -huh. And I was blessed uh, to make good money and so forth and take care of my family and everything. And so you just, you just keep going. You just, just live going. your life. Right. right. Well, I'm glad you got through that and the context was seen. Um, and, and again, even with you, it's, you would think, okay, anybody who's in this hall, they've had it made. You guys, you're the biggest, you're the best and everything else. And you made it a point to say, I got cut from my high school team. Yeah. Now, was that, was, were you on some super high school team or something? Or like, how would you not make your high school team, even in 10th grade, which is understandable. How would that happen? Yeah, well, they didn't have a JV team. Because a lot of, a lot of lot, in, in, in Tampa, they start high school uh, in your 10th grade. And a lot of other places, they start ninth grade. Right. They start freshman year. And so in Tampa, we started, 10th grade was the first year, your first high school year. And so uh, they had a senior first baseman, and, and so I figured I didn't have a chance. So I'd never played outfield before in my life, mm. but I tried out for the outfield. You know, and like I said, ball go gets past me, goes to the <laughs> wall and everything, and uh, I didn't make it. You know, it's a kind of one other thing. We showed this, um, and actually Harold showed it be before uh, in our uh, MLB Tonight, like, pregame show. Uh, the home run in the upper deck, man. I still can't believe that. Just watching that bounce, <laughs> even today, like when the ball got a little more jacked up and it would go up there. But uh, do you watch that again? I mean, that was in the upper deck, like at the top of that, you know, like the, the entrance way. It's unbelievable. But that put me on the map. Yeah. And plus, when you do it in Yankee Stadium, Monday Night Baseball in Yankee Stadium, it's the ultimate. It was kind of in their face, yeah. too. Right? <laughs> maybe they shouldn't have traded you. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but it, it was great because I was young. I was um, DHing. Cecil, Cecil was playing against right-handers, mm -hmm. and I was playing against uh, I was playing against right-handers. Cecil was playing against uh, lefties, and so you're just trying to break in because once you, you make it up to the big leagues, now you just kind of like I got to do something to know that I belong there, you know? Because you, you, when you're young, <laughs> yeah. you think yeah. you think the big leagues is awesome. You think. The guys are perfect. The guys never make errors. They never strike out and everything. And then you get there, and you're like, okay, he strikes out. You know, mm -hmm. they, they make mistakes. So you, you, can, you can hang and play, but you need that big moment to like, yes, I yeah. can do it. <laughs> that would do it. I want to retroactively stack cast that. I don't know how high up that was or how far it was. We got 500 <laughs> feet up there. Fred, it's so rewarding to see you here and be able to see, uh, enjoy it with your family. and. Uh, I'm glad to see you soak it all, and you did fantastic yesterday. Congratulations to you. It, Thank you, Fred. Thank Hall you. of Famer Fred McGriff.